All right, how's it going everybody? Thanks for tuning in. I wanted to do a new tutorial series because I got tired of the Python one and I figured if I'm not entertaining myself by doing it and I don't really have much of an audience for it, I just shouldn't do it. I should do something that interests me and something kind of new. So I want to get into the Crystal programming language, which is a relatively new language. And so this first video is just going to be talking about installing it and then we'll learn together because this is something that's also new to me and you can go through the process of how I usually learn and you can follow along. So I'm on my desktop right here. You can see just my desktop got my fancy uh, uh, mathematically correct image of a black hole. <laughs> uh, anyway, so all I have open right now is a terminal. As I've mentioned before, I'm on Fedora Linux. So the installation will be a little bit different if you're on Mac OS or Windows or another Linux distro. And I'm gonna head over to Crystal, oops, Crystal Language, Language, if I can spell correctly. And right here we have crystal-lying.org. That's a website you wanna to head to. And here's the website you'll be greeted with. Of course, they have their fancy animated logo. That's one thing I love about this language. Uh, the name I think is really cool and the logo is pretty cool as well. So the tagline for this is slick as Ruby, fast as C. So if you don't know, Ruby is another programming language that is very readable. It's, it's almost similar to Python and how it's readable, but it's still useful. And then C programming is a very, very, very fast programming language. You really don't get faster than it unless you're looking at something even lower level than assembly. When I say low level, I mean close to hardware. So harder to read, but still faster. So this is a really big claim to make that your language is as readable as a language like Ruby that's built to be easy to read and as fast as a language that was not built for readability. It was built to just be an easy way to write programs back when uh, computer programming was relatively new. So let's get into this, how you install it. If, once you get to this website, if you don't know if you actually want to try it out, you want to follow my video series for a little while and you don't want to download it, you can just click try online and it'll bring up an online compiler and you can write whatever you want. Like I'll just do a hello world. Oh, I'm so used to pressing save. Compile and run and then it'll just run it in your browser. You can see output hello world. But if you want to install it, you want to get into it, uh, of course you have the form and whatnot, you can look at the code for it on GitHub. So let's click the install here. So then you'll be greeted with this page, which just has a ton of options depending on what OS or what distro you're on. Of course you can install it from source, again from source. And if you're on Mac, I would click this. I imagine it's pretty straightforward. Oh, okay, so it's using Homebrew, uh, which is quite easy to install, so that's not too big of an issue and if you're on Ubuntu and so on. And then Windows, they require you to have the subsystem. Hopefully it tells you here how to install the subsystem. Yeah, so I would recommend if you're on Windows, just stick to running it in the browser, uh, unless you already have a subsystem, in which case I would do that. But if you don't know what any of that means, just run it in the browser and just use that compiler. Again, I'm on Fedora, so I'm gonna take a look over here. So I have a couple options it looks like. I can install it from Snap or I can install it from Linux Brew. I am not a big fan of Snap or Linux Brew. So here I just go on to explain why I don't like to use third-party package managers on Linux. I like to just stick to the default one. And I try and install it from Snap and I have some issues and then I end up installing Linux Brew and then realizing that I can just follow the Red Hat instructions which is where my OS is based, essentially. If you're on Mac OS or you're on a different, more supported uh, Linux distro, you shouldn't have any issues with this, so don't be concerned. Just be consistent. So, for example, I should have just gone with the snap path instead, and I shouldn't have concerned myself with trying to do it through Linux Brew or Red Hat. Instead, I just went through Red Hat, which is what I prefer, but this is why it took me so long, so don't be too concerned, it's an easy install. So after going through like half of the install for Linux Brew, I think I'm just going to go through the install for Red Hat. Uh, of course, Fedora is based or rather derived from Red Hat, so this will work no problem. 
So I'm gonna run all this once Linux Brew is completed, and then we will take a look, as long as DNF is supported instead of yum. Okay, so we're back, Linux Brew completed. Um, I'm probably gonna uninstall it, but of course I'm gonna try this first. So once again, this will not be as complicated for you if you're on a more used distro, or rather a more supported distro like Ubuntu, or even if you're on Mac OS. But of course, if you're on another distro, you probably know what you're doing. None of this is super complicated. These are things that you pick up pretty early on as a Linux user. All right, so once I installed that, the issue was it wasn't actually prompting me for my password. Let's grab this. And then install, and I should just be able to use DNF. sudo dnf install crystal. There we go, look at that. All right, I'll jump back when this is completed. Okay, so my installation is complete and I've uninstalled Linux Brew. So the first thing you should always do when you, for example, install a new programming language, really when you install anything, you wanna test it. So we're gonna go through and test it. Let me jump to a directory. Okay, so now I'm in a directory where I can write a program. Okay, so now everything's a bit more clear. So I have an empty directory. I'm just gonna write a quick hello world program in Crystal. I know very little Crystal. I really only know it from Ruby. I know a, a bit of Ruby and it carries over somewhat. So this command right here is just opening it in Vim. Of course, you can use any other text editor you want. I just don't want to go through the hassle of opening it. If you're unfamiliar with Vim, it's not a problem. So to do hello world, you can just say puts hello world. We can get into more why you wouldn't want to say print or rather, you know, why you would. Okay, so now we have that all written and let's run it. So you can run it just by saying crystal hello world.cr and you will notice after I press enter, it won't do anything for a bit. And you may think, I thought this was supposed to be a really fast language. And it's actually just compiling the code first. When you run crystal, it compiles and then runs, which makes it a bit easier sometimes. You can specify if you just want it to build, but we'll get into that more in the future. So crystal hello world.cr, it's gonna compile and then it'll run and you'll see hello world. So that means everything's all set up and you're ready to go. So I hope you learned something. Once again, the link is crystallang.org. I will leave it down in the description. You will come to this website, install, choose whatever operating system you're on, and then you'll be set. Uh, if you don't have a Windows subsystem, if you're on Windows, which I'm sure a lot of you are, and I don't expect a lot of you will have a subsystem. You can install one, but if you're not comfortable with that, I would just recommend compiling the code in here and then saving it on your local machine. But that's just me. It's your life, it's your computer. So of course, I look forward to making some of these tutorials in the future, and I hope it's gonna be a, a good series. If you have any questions, just leave them down below and I'll be sure to get to them. So thank you for watching and be safe.